Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from Luke chapter 2 verses 1 through 14 and this is what it says. Now it came about in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria and all were proceeding to register for the census, everyone to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because the, he was of the house and family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. And it came about that while they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And in the same region... There were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were terribly frightened. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be for all the people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among men with whom he is pleased. Pray with me. Lord, the announcement of your birth, it changes everything. You ushered in a kingdom that, Lord, we want to be a part of. Use this morning to do just that. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Read a story about a fellow named Earl and his good best friend, Frank. Uh, They loved to play golf. They played golf just about every day during the week. So they made a, a pact that whoever died first... They would come back and, and visit in, in a dream or in a vision that, that, and tell the other one whether, was, whether there was golf in heaven or not. Well, sure enough, Frank died first, and, and he was true to his word. He came back, and, and he appeared to Earl. He said, Earl, I've got good news, and I've got bad news. The good news is there is golf in heaven. Earl was so excited. He said, that's fantastic. Good, there's golf in heaven, but what's the bad news? He said, well, the bad news is your tea time is next Tuesday at 10 o'clock. <laughs> well, who doesn't like good news? We all like good news. That's why the angel came, was to give good news. Good news of great joy, which shall be for all the people. And the good news is that there's a Savior. A Savior. Literally, the word means rescuer. Someone to rescue you. And not just some of us, said you and me, all of us. It's good news for all of us. We have a Savior. 
His name is Christ the Lord. And you can lean on him. You can lean on him. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. Good news. Good news that we have a Savior and you can lean on him. You can lean on him because he holds the future. And that's the first thing that I want to talk about this morning. Bishop Emerson Kolaw told a story about a fellow who was being moved from a church that he dearly loved. And the congregation there loved him. They had a reception for him, and he got there early before the reception, and he began to look around the room. There were a lot of cards, flowers, gifts for him there, and his heart was, was really warmed by it. But he was puzzled a little bit because there was one spray of flowers that had a, a card and the card had a little note on it, but it didn't have a name. And the card said, rest in peace. Well, he decided he would, he would call the florist. He told the florist, he said, I, I, you all sent over this beautiful spray of flowers, and I'm thankful for it. But there was a, a note with no name, and the note said, rest in peace. Well, the other end of the phone was silent. When the florist finally spoke, he said, well, it may warm your heart to know somewhere in the city... There's a fellow having a funeral, and his card reads, good luck where you're going. Well, we don't need good luck where we're going. Then we have a Savior, and that Savior holds the future. And this is what Scripture tells us. In Romans 10, verse 9, it says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Not you might be saved or, or, or good luck being saved. Or if you're saved and you're really, really, really good, you shall be saved. This was given for your assurance and mine that we have a Savior a Savior named Christ the Lord, and we can lean on Him. That if you confess with your mouth, well, we know what that is, but if you believe with your heart, sometimes we think believing has to do with our heads, but this says believe with your heart. And the Greek word there is pistuo, and pistuo, the root of it is, is pistis, and it, it means literally to lean on, to rely on, to trust in. That, that you, you know someone well enough that you have confidence in that someone. And that someone is Jesus Christ. That He's your Savior and mine. And His desire is relationship where you lean on Him, where you trust Him, where you rely on Him. Because He holds the future. 1 John 5.13 says, These things I've written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God in order that you may know that you have eternal life. Not that you might have a guess of eternal life or a hope of eternal life, that you might know that you have eternal life. That's written for your assurance and mine because we have a Savior, a Savior. His name is Jesus Christ and you can lean on Him. He holds the future. He holds all of eternity. You can lean on him. Second thing that I want to talk about this morning is you can lean on him because he holds the present. Maureen Jones was a woman who lived with her husband for many years after he passed away. She lived alone in, in their home. Well, after many years, she realized that she needed to make that, that hard decision. And that decision was to move into assisted living. There was one assisted living place where she knew more people than, than the others, and so she chose that place. She set a, a time and a date with the director where he would meet her in the lobby, and he would show her around the place and to her room where she would be staying. Well, when the director came in and said, good morning, Mrs. Jones, I'll be glad to show you to your room and, and show you what it looks like. Well, with the, ex with the excitement of a six-year-old, she squealed, well, I just love the room. And that's when the director said, well, Mrs. Jones, you haven't seen it yet. How do you know you love it? And that's when Maureen Jones said this, it doesn't matter. Whether I like the room or not does not depend on how the furniture is arranged. It depends on how I've arranged my mind, and I've already decided to love it. 
It's a decision I make every morning when I get up. I can be happy or sad. I can be grumpy or grateful. Because I'm a Christian, I choose to see each day as a gift from God. Because I'm a Christian, I choose to be happy and grateful. Jesus Christ came into the world. And when he rose from the grave, he rose to give you and me power to transform the way that we see this world. The way that 2 Corinthians 5.17 says it is this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. The old things are those things that we might look and see that we want to be grumpy rather than grateful. The new creation is, is, is this, this, this kingdom, this kingdom that he ushered in through his life, through his death on the cross, and through his resurrection. And you and I get to be a, a part of that creation. Not just one day, but right now, here today, in the present. Romans 12, 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. The risen Christ transforms your mind and mine. He transforms us into a, a new creature where we have the eyes to see a, a new creation, not just one day but this day, where we can choose, choose, Choose to lean on Him, to rely on Him, to trust in Him, and to be grateful, not grumpy. We have something far better than a, a guardian angel. We have a Savior, and His name is Jesus. He came to, to transform you and me into new creatures, new creatures with new eyes that see a, a new creation. A kingdom that he ushered in. You can lean on him. You can rely on him. You can trust him. He holds the present. He holds the future. And the last thing that I want to talk about this morning is you can lean on him because he holds the past. Back in 2009, my son was in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. You might remember him. He was the, the fellow there on Times Square with the, with the drums around him, the quads. Well, he had the Harrison High School band around him as well, but my son was in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. You know, it was a great time to be there, to see him there in the parade, celebrate with him, but it was also a great time to, to look around New York and I, one of the things I was struck by was in front of the Rockefeller Center was a huge, huge statue of Atlas. Atlas had the world on his shoulders. His head was down, his back was bent, and his knees were bowed under the weight of the world. Now contrast that to across the street in St. Peter's Cathedral. There was a much, much, much smaller statue behind the high altar it was a statue of a boy, and in the hands of this boy was the world. This boy was Jesus. And the contrast is clear, that you and I, we can try and, and carry this world on our shoulders, and about the best that it'll happen is we'll be crushed by it. Head down, back bent, and knees bowed. Or we can trust that Jesus holds this world, this world that you and I live in, this world that, well, in 2020, we need some good news. We can trust that he holds this world in his hand. And that, well, what he did on the cross, that it was enough, enough Enough to take all of the sorrow, all of the shame, and all of the sin. That he, when it was most acute, he took it on himself and he nailed it to the cross. 
to take away its power once and for all. And when he rose from the grave, he gave that power to you and me. The power that that wiped away all the sin of your past and mine. All the shame of your past and mine. That on the cross, he offered you and me forgiveness once and for all. A forgiveness. A forgiveness that forgives all the sin that, that, that's in your past and mine. And not only that, but all the sin that's in your present and mine. And all those sins we would ever commit. And this is what Scripture tells us. It tells us in 1 Peter 3.18 that Christ died for sins once for all. The just for the unjust in order that he might bring us to God having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit. That His Spirit lives in you and in me when we lean on Him, when we rely on Him, when we trust Him, when when we believe on Him in our hearts and receive Him, that He makes His home his home, and gives us power that that we don't have on our own. A power enough that has power, power over all that's past, all that's present, and a power that leads us into the future. 1 Peter 5.17 says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. You matter to God. He cares for you. That, that's not just good news. That's the best news that this world has ever heard. And that's the news. That's the news that the angels proclaimed uh, 2,000 years ago. And that's the good news that, that angels proclaim today. That's the good news that, that you and I can take part in. We have a Savior We have a Savior, and you can lean on Him. This morning, it may be that you've been trying to bear the weight of the world during 2020. And that that this day, that you want to renew that, that confession. You want to renew that commitment to rely on Him, to lean on Him, to trust in Him. And not try and carry around the weight of the world by yourself. It also may be that this day you've never made that confession. That you've never made that commitment to rely on Him, to lean on Him, to trust in Him. And that you want to do it this day for the first time. Well, I want to pray with you. That you receive, you receive the power of His Spirit in your life and and you allow Him to carry the world in His hand. Because you can lean on him. You can re- lean on him and trust him. To hold the, the past, the present, and the future for you and for me. Pray with me. Jesus, we need your strength and we need your power this day. That we may no longer try and carry the way to the world but we might receive your good news and become that that new creature, that new creation that that you intend us to be, not because we carry around the, the weight of the world on our shoulder, but because we rely on you as Savior to forgive all that's past, and we rely on you as Savior to carry, to carry the, the weight of this world to hold the past, to hold the present, and to hold the future. Lord, 2020 has been a hard one for us, and we need your strength, maybe now as much as we ever have, that we might know your peace, and we might live in that peace, that strength, 
that we have something far greater than a guardian angel. We have a Savior. And your name is Jesus Christ. May we trust in your name. Rely on your name. Lean on your name. This day and in the world and in the days to come. Breathe on us the power of your Spirit. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're a church that's a place of community and faith, and we're a welcoming church. I hope that you experience that online, but not only online. My hope is that you experience it through our Facebook page. But not only that, once we meet together in person, we're at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, and I hope you'll come and experience it in person. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church. And we're a compassionate church. It's a place of community and faith where we help people live a Christ-centered life. And my hope is that you'll come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us.